Hello Internet! Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, a number of you have brought up that we should be using steps or smooth steps instead of using branches when we do things like this. Uh, so if you're not familiar, this is our ripple shader done in Shader Graph. And we are using a branch right here. Uh, well, a comparison and then a branch to do the, the differences. But in shaders, doing branching is a very slow process. It's not really something you're supposed to do unless you don't have any other alternatives. And it sounds like steps are going to be a good alternative here. So one of the things I really like about shaders is they're a really good way to represent math functions visually. Uh, it makes it really easy for you to see how something is going to look across a very wide uh, set of inputs without having to do a lot of work to see that. And so hopefully we can kind of use use that property to give us a, a way to explore this step and smooth step function in a relatively uh, easy way. So we're not actually going to modify this uh, shader graph thing. We're actually just going to create our own because uh, why not? And so we should be able to go up to shaders here and create a new... Uh, let's do a PBR graph. So that'll be a physically based renderer graph. And this will be our step uh, shader graph shader. Sure. And then from that, we should be able to open our shader editor, get to this, and it doesn't look like anything we want. Uh, we're going to want a few nodes here. First, I think we're going to add a world space position position. There we go. And so this is going to be the world space. The reason we're doing this is because we already have a plane on the XZ plane or XZ axis, which means that we can actually just use that and kind of uh, treat it like a 2D graph effectively. Instead of on the XY plane like you'd normally expect, it's on the XZ uh, just because it's across the width and the depth instead of the height. Uh, and so we should be able to do a step here they're both options, so step and smooth step are both options here. We're going to start with a step. And I'm curious what will happen if we just plug that in here. And then stick that in the output to our albedo. I don't really know what this is going to do, but it looks like it changed it to accept a vector 3 in and a vector 3 out. So my assumption is that it's going to take the input uh, x, y, and z position of, our, of whatever mesh we apply this shader to, and then do a smooth step against 0, 0, 0, or, or do a step against 0, 0, 0. My understanding of this is that it gives you two different results depending on what you get. Uh, so we kind of get this sphere here. I can't rotate it. Well, that that's unfortunate. Um, but the, the way I understand this to work is if it's less than 0, it becomes zero, and if it's greater than zero, it becomes one. I believe that's how this works, and based on the uh, example output we're getting, that seems correct. But I don't actually know how to uh, test that, and it seems like, oh, that is working. Okay, we can change it now. Uh, keep in mind, world space stuff, so as we actually move this, the colors should stay exactly where they are. And we're actually rotating the mesh in, in world space. Uh, so it will change that way, not the other way. Uh, so let's use a cube. I guess this is less useful. But you can see in the back there, it's actually black. I believe that's what I'm expecting. But this is not the best way to, to explore this. Instead of doing it like this uh, and trying to deal with these 3D coordinates and kind of figure out what's going on here, let's just plug in the X coordinate. So we're going to, instead of taking this uh, X, Y, Z, we are going to just take our X. And I don't really know how to do that. So let's do a vector 3. And I think I can just plug this in like that. Does that work? No. Uh, I don't actually know how to do this. Uh, again, still learning this whole tool. So, 
Huh. Okay. Let me figure this out. Logic. No. Channel. Combine, flip, split. Split sounds correct. Yeah. So we can plug this in as the input here. We get RGBA. That's not really what we want. It's actually going to be uh, X, Y, Z, and W. But in in graphics, those kind of mean the same thing. So R here is actually going to be our X. And so we should be able to plug this in. And now we get white on one side and black on the other. And so I should be able to save this. We'll get a shader we can actually use. Uh, I'm actually just going to attach this here so that we can kind of just dock it and keep going. Actually, it'll probably be even easier if we just put it over here and shrink this window to be much, this sample window to be much smaller. Uh, and hopefully we can kind of fit some of this on there. There we go. So that's our entire gross uh, layout for a shader. Looks something like that. And so we need a material to apply this to. Let's just grab a material here. So this will be our step material. And now we should be able to apply this step shader straight to the step material and then attach it to this plane. And so we have white on one side and black on the other. And an easier way to see what's actually going on might be to just add a cube at 0, 0, 0 and plug this same step material on like that. So it's also white on one side and black on the other side. And now we can drag this in either direction. And as the world position changes, you can see as it as X increases, it becomes black. And as a Y increases or as as X decreases, it becomes white, which makes me think that we should be able to take this X and actually plug it in here instead and delete this and plug in a zero and that should invert what we're seeing so now white should appear on our left and black on the right uh, or white positive and black negative if that makes more sense uh, and so yeah and that's sort of what we're, what we're seeing here so this seems to be effectively a comparison and gives you one if um if your second value is greater than the first value otherwise it gives you a zero that that seems to be what this is sort of indicating to me the problem with this is it's a very hard hard line between one and the other and so if you want to actually smooth th smooth things out make this transition less uh, dramatic you can actually use a smooth step I don't really understand how smooth step works gonna I mean I don't didn't understand how step worked either but we're going to try this I don't really know how this is gonna go but uh, there's a third value here so we can delete that plug this in here we were using zero Ooh. oh okay we're gonna plug this into the input that's what I want and then this can go to our albedo and so my understanding is this is very similar, but instead of doing uh, greater than or less than zero or greater than or less than the other uh, input, there's two inputs. And so if the input is less than both of them, it becomes black. If it's greater than both of them, it becomes white. And if it's somewhere in between, uh, a smoothing function gets applied. And so this can, should accept both positive and negative values. So if we do negative five and five, it's gonna look kind of gray here because again, that mesh is in the middle there is pretty small, but on the, the larger scale in our actual scene, you should be able to see a, a sort of a ramp transition. So it should slowly curve up and then level back off, uh, sort of like, like this. And so we kind of, it looks kind of foggy. Let me see if I can turn that off. We don't need fog for this, it's probably just getting in the way there we go so we have blue uh it's, it's supposed to be white but again skybox stuff and lighting uh can we deal with that light too yeah it's probably more work than it's worth <laughs> so in this case we have sort of this this smoothing between the two uh it's kind of 
hard to see a hard edge here, but we have ne between negative five and five, so my, or minus five would be right around here. This is probably gonna be easier if I rotate this. <laughs> so five now is going off to the right and negative five is off to the left, right around here in the center. And so it gets smooth in between, I guess. But on either other on either side of it, it gets very uh, one or the other. It either is white on the right side or black on the left side if it's less than. Uh, and we can reduce this field. So if I make these between negative one and one, for example, the area that is smoothed should become significantly smaller. But the, it will still occur. You can it's probably more easy to see this way because you have a single grid line separating the minus one and zero and then zero and one are also separated by a single grid line uh, and it just kind of makes it easier to see but i guess that's how smooth step works that's actually relatively straightforward um, i was sort of expecting to go on this really long like exploration of it but i think that's really all that's here uh you can kind of mess with all these other things but edge one and edge two are just going to be your left and your right side of this. Uh, so in this case, minus one is this uh, black edge, I guess. And then one is the white edge on the other side. And then the input is sort of where in that function you are. If you end up in between, it's going to figure out how to smooth between the two. And if you end up on either side, it's going to take the, the most extreme value, but it's going to cap it. Uh, so you won't go between, or you won't go less than zero or greater than one. Uh, and that's sort of the, the point here. It's very similar to, uh, if I'm re remembering stuff correctly, it would be very similar to doing like a clamp with a, a min and a max uh, and, and figuring out how to get all of this stuff to kind of uh, work and then having some uh, power function in there to ramp it. Uh, because this isn't a linear transition between the two. Uh, one of the, the things a smooth step does is it actually does something other than a linear transition. I think it uses like uh, some some power function in order to get a really nice ramp going for you. And you won't get that if you just try to do this linearly, which is kind of nice. Uh, probably lots of uses where we could have used this in the past and I just wasn't really super familiar with it, so I, I used what I knew. Uh, but we'll probably have to use this more because this is actually this was actually really easy. Uh, but hopefully this kind of exposed this uh, these two functions to you guys and you kind of are, are able to use them now. And hopefully also it kind of explored how I I use shaders as sort of a way to explore these mathematical things because one of the really th one of the things that I really like about shaders is they're a very visual thing. And so if you have an idea of what you want to see and sort of a function that you're kind of envisioning, you can plug that into a shader and it will it will do whatever you tell it to do. And it gives you as long as you're working with like really simple things, it can be a really good way to kind of understand how that's working and how how functions are kind of interacting with one another and and creating the things that you're actually seeing uh, because uh, this is a really simple example because we're just we're just using a single input here we're just taking a smooth step of of our world position and feeding that out and that that's what we get and you can kind of do that with anything if you want to see what a power looks like you can do that too obviously there's restrictions and debugging shaders can be a little bit hard uh, but I, I feel like, especially with shader graph now, it gets really easy to kind of just throw this stuff together and, and explore that. But these functions aren't just in shader graph. If you're working with surface shaders, they'll work there too. Uh, but we just use shader graph because that's what we're doing with this project. So uh, I'll leave it here because I think that's all I have to say on the subject. But hopefully this was this was interesting. Hopefully, hopefully uh, it's something that you guys can go and use in your own projects. But we will pick up on this and actually do the ripple shader hopefully before the end of the weekend. So I hope to see you there. Uh, and that's it for this video. So until next time, see you internet.